Okay, hey, it's Anthony Anarino with the new book, Leading Growth. I've got some copies of these. If you order it now on Amazon and you send me a receipt, I will sign this book and I will send it to you. But right now, what I want to do is explain the book so that if you haven't yet bought the book, I can give you some reason to think about buying it for yourself or buying it for your team. I've written four books for salespeople, the only sales guide you'll ever need, which is a competency model. And I did this first because I wanted to lay out all of the things that a salesperson has to be and what they need to know how to do in order to be successful. Once that was done, then I, I went on to the Lost Art of Closing so we could talk about managing the whole process. And then I wrote Ether Lunch about displacing your competitors and stealing customers. And then I wrote uh, the Elite Sales Strategies book, the book about being one up, and a critical book for salespeople to read and to practice. This book is the same as the only sales guide. It is the competency model for a modern sales organization today and modern sales leaders and sales managers. So I'm gonna just walk you through what the chapters are and I'll give you just a quick introduction to the chapter. You have to start with a vision. When we talk to sales leaders, they don't have a vision. They don't know what they want from their team. They don't know why they want it. They don't know where they're going. They just hope that they get net new revenue and growth. And that is not a good way to do it, is to do it without a vision. So what you have to do at the beginning of this book is you have to figure out where are we going? How are we going to get there? What do I need my team to be? What do I need them to be so that they could deliver better results than they did last year? And remember, every year you get a new quota, they get new targets, and we start this process all over again. The second thing is, is if you didn't get the results that you needed, then you need to transform your team in some way. And different people might need different things, but generally, when you start a transformation, what you're saying is, I want to enroll you in this vision with me, and I want to start making the changes that we need to make so that we can maximize our potential here, and we can reach these goals. The more people that reach their goal on your team, the closer you get to your goal itself. So you can't bring that vision together unless your team changes with you. So we're going to do this in a very, very good way. We're going to enroll them in this vision and we're going to ask them to commit to the vision because we don't want them to be compliant. We want them to be all in, push all the poker chips straight into the middle of the table and let's go, let's get after it. So that's what we're going to do in that chapter. Then you have to have communication and leadership communication is different than a lot of other communications. So let me describe uh, leadership communication. Say the same thing over and over and over and over again until people start to believe it. You have to keep going. If you say something once, everyone's going to know you're not serious. They're not going to take you uh, your vision and they're not going to take that into account. They're just going to go back to doing what they were doing and they're going to wait you out. And What's the likelihood of them waiting you out from their view? Like, well, remember three years ago, we were going to be challengers and we never did that. And then remember the next year when we were going to do uh, back to basics and then we didn't do that. And now we're going to do account based marketing and we're going to use that as our structure. And they know like you give up too soon on these things. Your will to communicate this over and over again until people believe it is a critical factor for growth. If you change your mind, if you go from one thing to the next thing, chasing shiny objects, you will not do well when it comes to revenue growth. Okay, that's the beginning. We call that foundations. The second thing is we start talking about your leadership styles. Mostly you're consensus builders. Mostly you're democratic. Mostly you want high engagement and you want your team to respect you and you want them to, to follow you. But... There are other choices available for you. So there's six more that you need. I won't go through all six, but I will tell you, sometimes you have to be an autocrat. You're allowed to have three or four non-negotiables, and you can be autocratic about that. You can smile while you do it. You can never be mean to anybody. You never have to use force or pressure, but you do have to get certain things done. And we call this do the right thing at the right time in the right way. If you get that much done, you're going to have a much better chance of succeeding. You might also need to be strategic or transformational, but we'll show you what all those choices are and how to make the decision as to who needs what from you and what does your team need from you. After that, we get into decision making. So let's say you've got two senior salespeople and they no longer prospect. They don't think that they have to. 
they get an annuity check from their commission, even though they're not prospecting anymore. They're just basically like a mother hen sitting on its egg. And that's all they do is just sit on the egg and collect the annuities. You have to decide, what do I do about these two people? Do I let them continue to do this and let everybody else recognize that all they have to do is get to a certain level and they never have to create another opportunity? Do I need them to decide to be account managers and take a different role because that's the role they're actually doing? If you let people not prospect, if you let them get away with that without you saying anything, what you're doing is you're condoning not growing your revenue. You're saying it's okay if we don't grow the revenue because I don't want to make these people a little bit uncomfortable and I don't want them to have to feel like I want them to do the work of a salesperson. They are a salesperson. Make them do the work. So you have to make decisions around this. And then we have to talk about strategy and alignment. Have you ever hired a salesperson and they come to you and they're like, hey, I need to lower this price for this client. You're like, hey, that's not our model, Jim. And Jimmy goes, well, they really want a lower price. And they said, our competitor has a lower price. You're not allowed to break the strategy. So you're going to choose a strategy. You're going to choose the strategy that works for the delivery model your company has. And everybody has to get in line. So this conversation that you're going to have here in that chapter is about strategy and alignment. Like we have to all be doing this in the same way, going the same way, making sure our value proposition is clear and not trying to choose another strategy to make it easier for us as salespeople. If that's true for you, this chapter will solve your problem. Okay, now we're getting to the heart of it, like the very heart of it. If you want the heart of leadership, it's people, effectiveness, and accountability. So there's two chapters on accountability here, and I've split them into two for a particular reason. First, I want you to understand that a lot of times when you're unhappy with your team, you said something like, hey, uh, you guys need to do some more prospecting. And people go, oh, yeah, okay, boss, I'll do it. I'll do some more prospecting. And then they make two calls. That's not what prospecting means. And so what we have to do is set very, very strong expectations of what we want with very, very clear direction on what we expect people to do. Then we can give them a timeline to do it, and then we can hold them accountable. But I'm going to give you a whole bunch of information about accountability here because it is so very important for revenue growth. After that, we're going to look at the structures. With one thing that I could tell you right here, I could improve the number of opportunities that you get on a weekly basis. On your pipeline meeting, do it Monday at 4.30 and only ask people, what new opportunities did you create last week? And you do that and you make them self-report in a team meeting. And about four weeks later, you're going to start seeing more opportunities coming because no one wants to say, oh, uh, boss, sorry, man, I couldn't create any opportunities for the last four weeks. Now you know you have a serious problem, but you can correct that by making people have to say that out loud in front of their peers. I don't want you to embarrass anybody. I don't want you to chastise them. You just say, listen, I'll help you next week. We'll make sure that you get some new opportunities in your pipeline. It's really important that this happens. And uh, let me show you some of the resources we can use together to make this happen. Not punitive. We don't want a punitive culture. We want a positive culture of accountability. It's much more important and much better. In a chapter on people, I will teach you how to hire. I've probably uh, interviewed close to 40,000 people in my life because I came out of staffing and I spent my whole day for many, many years just interviewing people. So I know a lot about this and I can share it with you. And then we'll talk about the competency models that you need to look at to say, what competencies do these people need to be on my team and then if they don't have those competencies, how do I help them? How do I train them and coach them and develop them so they can do these things? And you'll find the answers there in that chapter. And that moves right into the next chapter, which is effectiveness. If you're a sales manager, if you're a sales leader, and you care about revenue growth, then the number one thing that you should focus on is specifically effectiveness. So if somebody has a 22% win rate, you want to get that to 44. If they're at 44, you want them to get them to 66. It's your job to make sure that they know how to sell. And right now, how you sell is way more important than what you sell. So you're going to have a, a long chapter here on effectiveness and what you can do to help your team. Which brings us to the last part of the book. How to manage your opportunities, which uh, I'll give you a structure for evaluating each opportunity. And then I'll give you a second chapter on this 
on how to forecast and what you want to ask your team so that you can be certain that something that is is going to be in a forecast that it is going to actually cross the line. Uh, that's an important thing to do. A couple more chapters. Protecting your sales force. If they're allowed to say, I'm an account executive, but I prefer to be an account manager, and they take that step to the left, then you don't have a salesperson anymore. And when they have the operations team say, hey, listen, there's a shipment missing. Uh, you have to help us find it. No, they don't have to help you find it. Um, we never go to operations and say, we need you to make cold calls. So we're not allowed to type invoices. We're not allowed to follow up on shipments. Uh, we're not allowed to solve all those problems that belong to somebody else. Otherwise, we won't generate the goals. We won't generate the revenue that lead us to our goals. Then there's a chapter on building your cadence. So we'll take all of the structures of accountability. We'll put them onto a calendar. And then we start this process all over again. Okay, so that is the book, Leading Growth. If you pick the book up and you read it and you practice what's in it, I promise you, you will get better results. Uh, I've been doing this for a very long time. We've done a lot of leaders uh, trainings and a lot of coaching. And this book will absolutely help you grow net new revenue. Okay, so you can get it right now at amazon.com. And if you pre-order it and you send me an email, I will send you a signed copy until I run out of them. So I got 150 books originally. They're my books. I can do what I want with them. And what I basically do with them is I sign them and I send them out. So when you buy the book, you can just hand it to somebody else and say, hey, you can have this one. I got a signed copy. Or you can just keep it and you can write in this one and then keep the signed one on your desk or something. Um, I asked for 150 more. And I've got 150 more. They'll go fast. Uh, we are actually selling this book I just found out we're selling this book faster than we sold this book. And this book did tremendously well right at the launch. So pick up Leading Growth. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out. Put some uh, comments in here. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Do good work. Uh, pick the book up. And I'll see you soon.